This week, we look at a few of the smartphone games that are making my thumbs ache. We chat to Plastic Wax, the Australian visual effects studio behind some of the best gaming cinematics. And if the real world isn't enough for you, Johnny Robot jumps feet first into the political machine 2016. This is Player Attack. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this week, Pirate Group 3DM has made the bold statement that it will not crack any single-player games for an entire year. The social experiment is designed to figure out what impact piracy really has on the PC market, hoping to prove once and for all whether retail gaming sales are actually impacted by available pirated versions. The decision kicked in with the Chinese New Year, so we've got 12 months to wait and see how it all pans out. In other news, Ubisoft revealed some juicy tidbits during its third quarter earnings call. First up, the games we can expect to see from the publisher over the next year or so. The lengthy list includes For Honor, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, Far Cry Primal, South Park, The Fractured Butthole, an unannounced IP, and, wait for it, the next instalment of Watch Dogs. One game that did not make the cut, however, Assassin's Creed. The studio has announced that it is stepping back and re-examining the franchise, and there will be no new Assassins vs Templars out this year. This will make 2016 the first year in a long time without a top-tier Assassin's Creed release, and you'll just have to settle for the film instead, which hits cinemas on December 21. Meanwhile, actor Michael Fassbender has gone on the record saying that the movie, which tells an all-new story for the series, has a Matrix feel rather than the fantasy romp that people may have expected. He explains that the idea of DNA memory elevates it to something an audience can actually believe in, and adds that there is very little green screen and computer trickery at play. Instead, you can expect old school stunts and spectacles, intricate action sequences, and all the stealth play we love from the games. Looking ahead to E3 now, and the PC gaming show will return in 2016, taking advantage of the Monday lunchtime slot left open when EA decided to do its own thing on Sunday afternoon. Organisers explained that they learnt a lot from the 2015 show, which they admit ran quite long at nearly two and a half hours. According to the team, it was important to have a big variety of participants on stage to convey the spectrum of exciting stuff happening on PC. This year though, things will be slicker, more focused and with more announcements and exclusive reveals rather than endless guests telling us things we already knew. Moving right along, and Sony's big upcoming zombie experience H1Z1 is now two upcoming zombie experiences as developer Daybreak Games splits the game in half. One half, the open world persistent multiplayer half, complete with crafting and base building, would now be known as H1Z1 Just Survive. The other half has been named H1Z1 King of the Kill, an arena-style grudge match which started life as a game mode in the original project. Apparently, the gaming public liked the arena shooter more than the developers had expected, to the point where fans tended to only play one or the other. It just made sense to spin it off into its own game with its own development team. And sticking with zombies, if you have a spare 10 million bucks lying around, you can pick up the Spotlight Edition of Dying Light the following. You'll get four copies of the game, and that's just the start. This is one for the movie fans. You'll get professional acting lessons, stuntman and parkour training, an off-road driving course, and a copy of the script for the Dying Light movie, which you'll need because you're playing a supporting role in the film. If you're serious about your love for Dying Light, it's at least worth a moment of consideration. You can buy Dying Light the following, Spotlight Edition, from Game in the UK. We've got more smartphone reviews coming up a bit later, but one game that you won't be playing on iOS is 2011's indie smash The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. It seems that Apple has refused to let the game onto the App Store, claiming that it depicts violence towards children, making it inappropriate. And speaking of not necessarily appropriate for kids, Five Nights at Freddy's is getting a range of toys. The three-inch tall figurines are on the way from McFarlane Toys, who is working with series creator Scott Cawthon, and are due out later this year. The initial set contains more than 300 pieces required to build a beautiful show stage inside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, including Freddy, Bonnie and Chica. Additional sets are also in the works, with McFarlane promising you will eventually be able to build the entire map of the game. The toys are due out in the US in August, with no word yet on international availability. And of course, speaking of Freddy Fazbear, he's back! Again! Five Nights at Freddy's World has been re-released for free after a failed effort earlier this year. Scott Cawthon's habit of making things public earlier than expected backfired this one, with the RPG published full of bugs and other issues nearly a month ahead of schedule. All original purchases have now been refunded, and the new version is out right now for everybody with a remodeled overworld and many other new features, plus a bunch of updates already in the works. 
And finally this week, Blizzard is expecting more than just gamers to go and see the Warcraft movie when it launches in June. As a nifty incentive for cinema goers, the publisher is considering offering copies of World of Warcraft for free to people who see the movie. The World of Warcraft Ultimate Movie Edition will include the base game and all current expansions, that's not including Legion, which will be out on or before September 21, that is, three months after the film first hits the big screen. At this stage, the publisher is seeking feedback on the idea, but we can't see too many people saying no to a free game, plus a month's subscription thrown in as well. For more information on any of these stories, or to keep up to date with the latest gaming news, head to playerattack.com. But for now, stick around, we've got plenty more still to come.